folks, welcome to the channel. It's just after the holidays, so I've had a little lull in builds because I've been on vacation. Um, and I know you guys wanted to see the next episode of the Elven Sword, but um, I don't have enough footage, uh, and I don't think you guys want to see an hour of hand sanding on the blade. So, what we're going to do instead is I just had someone purchase the push daggers. So I haven't done the sheath for that. So it's gonna be a, a kind of a unique sheath because it's gonna be a back mount. So I thought that'd be a cool thing to show you guys. So let's get it done. Let's go down to the table and take a look. So we've got our push daggers here and that's kind of the way they're gonna be mounted. I want them mounted in the sheath. Um, think of this as, you know, this is someone's back. This is the small of the back here and you kind of pull them from behind and that's kind of a cool way to do this. So the belt would be about here, okay? And I want them like this. So instead of creating kind of one sheath, complex sheath, and then you have to do a back carry, what I thought I would do is a sheath for each one and then a piece on the back that you could snap to each one. So you could, you could take that that connector piece off and just mount them singly if you want them side mounted, um, kind of like guns. <laughs> or if you want them back mounted, you just put that, that piece on here. So here's what I'm thinking. Let's move these. There's the sheath, okay? And just to make it easier to put on so you don't have to thread it through your belt, there's gonna be two snaps here so you'll hook it over a belt and then snap that. There'll be two other snaps on the back of the sheath. Okay, and then obviously there's gonna be another one of these mirrored over here. And then there's this back connector piece, which will snap in like that. So I think that'd be pretty cool. And it gives you a lot of versatility. So let's get it done. So here's the pattern. Uh, I folded it out. Always make sure you've got the right facing of the leather um, so that you don't accidentally flip it the wrong way and you got the rough side. Another tip here is when you're doing this, leave enough space where there's going to be a welt. Because um, what I like to do is just cut this edge and then I know this is the perfect curvature. Then I can just come and cut the outside here and that will be my welt automatically. So I always make sure anytime there's a welt, I leave enough space here. So now I'm just gonna trace it out and then um, we'll cut it out. I always like to cut it out like this first. It's much easier to, to maneuver it while it's just a small piece instead of trying to do it on this big one. So then I can roll this up and be done with the big piece. So I got them all cut out. Um, this one, yeah, this is this side. This is that side. And these will fold back under. Now I'm just gonna use some water and just bend these over and make sure that they're all good. Actually, before that, let's make sure these are pretty symmetrical. Yeah, this one's a bit larger in some, okay, so I'm gonna trim them up and just make sure that they are perfectly the same. So let's do that. So there's something I didn't notice. There's a little score in the leather here. It's, and sometimes this happens, you'll just get a little crease in the leather or something. I'm going to have to recut this one because I'm not happy with that. That's too bad. So I've recut this one uh, and I've also cut all the welts. And the welt is the so that the blade doesn't cut the stitching. 
So next step is to glue in the welts and then we need to put the um, all of the um, snaps, the holes for all the snaps before obviously before we put the front on because we won't be able to get at them. All right, let's get to it. So now I've got all the welts all glued up. We're going to sit them like this for at least an hour, preferably a little more, and then we'll come back and we'll do the holes for our snaps. While those are gluing up, I figured I would take you through snaps. Um, if you've never used snaps, they're a bit complicated, so I figured I would take you through that. So I bought them in this kit that has a bunch of different um, colors and stuff. It's got the little punches for them, and I think this was like, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. It was ridiculously cheap. So snaps have four pieces to them. The first piece is the piece that you snap into, and that has a back and a front, and then the leather would be in the center, and then what you do is you take this guy, which is kind of like a hollow thing, and you place it over top and you give it a whack, and then that kind of sets that in the, uh, in the leather. Sometimes, especially if um, uh, you're going to have a, a chance that um, the backing, like sometimes the, the backing is like for this one, it's actually going to be inside the sheath. So sometimes I will um, put a little depression and then put that in there so that the backing doesn't touch this backing. Uh, the blade is not touching that. You'll see what I mean when I do it. The other half is... Here's, that would be the top of your snap. That's what your thumb is going to press on. And then this piece. And then again, those will go in here. And you use a different one, which is this guy. You place it in the center and it kind of just rolls over. If you can see it, this little area here, it kind of rolls over that on the inside and locks it in place. So that's basically how snaps work. Uh, also, there's this, um, I've got a piece of leather in there, but this is the tool that you use to actually score the hole to fit these into. So, uh, these could be a bit confusing. It took me a little while to figure these out when I first did them because of the four pieces. It didn't come with instructions on how to do this. So, there you go. That's how you do snaps, folks. Okay, so I got these glued up. I am ready to put... Um, the holes for the two snaps here that will snap the back onto it and it's going to be snapped about there so now the trick is going to be I need to put these holes in first because of course you don't want to put them over these so I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and I want it and also you got to take into account that these are a little wider than the hole, so don't get them too wide that the snap hangs over the edge because that looks terrible. So I need to put them about, yeah, about a quarter inch from the edge. So just eyeballing it here, I need to put them about here. There. And here. Okay, now, and uh, I don't care, so in the, and make sure, so this is the side I want the snaps on, so these are going to be the, the receivers, so that's what's going to be going through here. So now, when I said before, to make sure that the, um, these are kind of countersunk, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to drill the holes and then I'm going to try to drill bit and countersink these so that the blade does not hit these. <laughs> there. Wow. Two holes. So I'm just going to take this over to the drill press, countersink these. I'll actually do the other one first.
So we've got all of our holes punched um, and uh, countersinked, and this is for the two snaps for the back and also the two snaps for the, uh, the back plate. So we'll put these aside. Now we're going to put uh, just some stamping in the front of these, and I'm also going to stamp my logo in the backs of those. So when I do stamping, you always want to get it wet first. And I always like to do stamping before I put dye on it because it'll mess up your, you'll have to re-dye it after anyway. I'm just going to put some uh, line-up marks here. Okay. There's all kinds of different stamping you can use. I'm going to be using, I'm just kind of a big fan of these um, kind of scales, but then I just do a couple of these scale patterns down the front. So that's what I'm going to do here. They're just easy to line up. And I find it sometimes a little too busy to do the whole front in scales. So we're just going to do it like this. You need to remember not to get too close to the edges because you're still going to have stitching. So you don't want your stamps to run into your stitching. Right, so there are those. And of course, we need our maker's mark on the sheath. And I try to keep these, it depends on the sheath. Uh, for this, I'm gonna keep them a little more subtle and put them on the back, uh, the back fold over plate. So it's gonna be like this. Um, we'll do it like that. All right, we're ready to throw some dye on these. So I'm using this Phoebing's black dye. A uh, couple things about this. Uh, unless you want dye in your hands for days, I recommend you use gloves. And uh, these things are really top heavy. So be really careful, because I've spilled one all over my bench before. So important things when using dye, make sure you do the places, even though like if someone's looking at the sheath, they may see in here. You don't need to do the whole bottom, but make sure you're going to do the insides of the sheath where they might see it, or it just looks odd. And we're going to come back and do another coat of this afterwards. This is just kind of a preliminary coat. And because this is the back of my sheath, I'm also going to be doing all of this. Okay, we got all these dyed. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of bevel the edges here because I'm going to burnish, which just means shine this part of the leather because that's going to be right where our knife sits. So we want this nice and smooth. Now that we've got everything ready for glue up, we need to put all the snaps in so that we can glue these on top.
So here they are after gluing. Next step, we're just gonna take these to the grinder, clean up all these edges, which is a really important part before you score this for your, um, for your stitch line. So let's go do that. Now that we got the sides all nice and even, we're going to use this grooving tool to put a groove all the way down here, and that's what we're going to put our stitches in. So now with this um, stitch marker, we're not gonna go all the way through, we're just gonna mark these and just go all the way down. And if it, the curve is too much, then use one that has less teeth. This is a little trickier because of the uh, things on the other end. Put this. All right, back to the drill press. We're gonna drill all these holes, then we'll stitch it up. All right, we're ready to stitch this up. I've got this just set up in the vise here with some protective pieces of leather. Um, measuring this out, you typically want to go at least about eight times the length here. So I've got this length twice. Okay, so that's how much thread times eight. So I'm just going to go, yeah, that's probably still not even enough. Um, the problem is it gets too long to, to be manageable. We'll try this. If I have to um, continue it again, I will. So we're going to be doing a saddle stitch, which is we're going to be doing this with the stitches. And this starts just by putting one through, evening this out. And then we're going to just keep going through each side. It goes pretty quick once you get used to it. Once in a while, these just get too stiff and you just gotta pull it through with pliers. Sorry guys, you missed a few steps because uh, my camera's video card was full. Uh, one annoying thing about this Sony camera is it doesn't beep or anything when the video card is full. So uh, the only thing you really missed was that um, I uh, finished the stitching burnish the edges and uh, put the final uh, clips in so really you didn't miss much one last oh and i did this piece that um, snaps on the back and i'll show you it put together the one thing i haven't done yet is i'm going to just use this tool on the stitches it just makes the stitches really kind of nice and lay flat There, it just kind of evens out the stitches, makes them all nice. 
So now here, let me show you this put together. We'll put the knives in it. Remember when I said it only cost me about 10 or 15 bucks for those snaps? Now I know why. Um, these things keep coming off when I pull the, the snaps. These things keep pulling off of here and getting stuck in here. So what I'm gonna do is just epoxy them onto here so that they will never come off. So while I was waiting for the epoxy to dry on the on the snaps, I went and coated them with some of this carnauba cream, which I might have. Um, and uh, it's kind of like a liquid wax, and it kind of dries. You get this white um, kind of finish on it. But now I'm going to take them to the buffer, and it buffs really nice and shiny after this. So uh, that's the next step. Okay, I've put a final coat of Neat's Foot Oil on these just to keep them nice and soft and supple. Let's do the final assembly. There they are, folks. They will go into belt loops here, and you can just reach around from the back, pull those out. Very cool. Thanks for joining me on this build, folks. Uh, I think they turned out really nice. Uh, the customer that purchased these knives is in professional security, so uh, I wouldn't want to be the guy that messes with him. Thanks for joining me, folks. We'll see you on the next one.